Hey guys, welcome to Convolution. My name is Khan, and this morning I'm going to be checking out two Ruby World of Remnant videos that you guys have been recommending me to check out, specifically titled The Great War and The Shni Dust Company. Now I've been super excited to check out The Great War simply because it's been hinted at in previous volumes, and I'm super excited to get into like learning more Ruby lore. Because if you guys haven't checked out my reaction to Ruby Volume 4, Chapter 8, I'll leave that link in the description below. But what happened there was a massive amount of info and lore drop. And you know me, I love me some lore. I love learning about lore. Lore galore, I need some more, bro. Man, I'm so excited to learn more and from reading all your comments from what I gather That was just the tip of the iceberg. So super excited for that shit, dude As always if you guys are enjoying watching these videos with me What are you waiting for? Click that subscription button hit that like button share the video with any other fans of Ruby out there Come over to my discord. Let's chat up over there share your thoughts and ideas Not only that but your artwork and memes as well I cannot wait to do another Ruby meme reaction which reminds me I got to do that tomorrow as well So I'm super excited to get into that you guys can hit me up on my other social medias links to all the social medias down below in the description and with that all being said, let's go ahead and dive into some more World of Remnant ready to hit me some more lore, bro. Let's go ahead and dive in. The first one is going to be The Great War. Let's dive in. Three, two, one. The Great War, son. The Great War. Damn. The Great War. What a terrible name for such a horrible time in history. Though the war itself lasted around ten years. Ten the years? The leading up to it was filled with so much tension, you might as well lump them together. And most of that tension was coming from Mistral. Oh, interesting. Territories rich with resources and safe from Grimm have always been in high demand. Makes sense. But the Emperor of Mistral had managed to conquer nearly all that Anima had to offer. Wow. Thanks in part to an unlikely friend, Mantle. Oh, right, because it was Mantle and... The two kingdoms had formed an alliance. Mistral provided the small kingdom with goods unavailable in the frozen tundra. Right. In return, Mantle introduced technological innovation as well as guidance in the settlement of Anima's cold northern territories. It was good until it wasn't. An incident in Mantle led to a strange and unexpected decree: the abolishment of the arts and repression of self-expression. Wonder what caused that. The people of Mantle had come to believe that they would be much safer from the Grim if they could simply keep the emotions of the masses. Check. Oh wow! Given Mistral's strong artistic culture, that's not gonna happen. Many assumed this would be the end of their right. alliance, but they were wrong. Mistral complied selectively. Oh wow! Enforcing Mantle's wishes only in the outer territories, allowing the centralized powers to continue to live as they please. Interesting. If you haven't caught on yet, Mistral's full of jerks. <laughs> The people of Vale had a problem with this. Well, they had a problem with a lot of things Mistral and Mantle had been right. up to. Treatment of their citizens, use of slave labor, and their constant insistence that their way of life was what was best for everyone. Slave labor? Eventually, Mistral made the jump across the sea to the eastern coast of Sanus. The small islands and peninsulas in the area were perfect to establish a settlement. Mm -hmm. They were so perfect, in fact, that Vale had just begun settling the area themselves. I think we can all guess what happened War. next. The King of Vale did everything he could to avoid armed conflict. Mm -hmm. Despite cries from his people, he insisted on sharing the land with the settlers from Mistral. But... <sighs> To this day, no one knows who shot first. But what began as a riot between the two bands of settlers has suddenly become the first battle of the Great War. Wow. Mantle quickly came to Mistral's side. Of course. Battles were fought on both Sanus and Anima soil. Villages were lost to both combat and grim. And it wasn't long before Vacuo decided to join the party. Mm. Up to this point, Vacu had done its best to stay out of the fight. Mandel and Mistral, having both already established a small presence in Vacuo territory years before, promised to leave them provided they didn't interfere. Soon, those talks evolved. It went from don't side with them 
to side with us and you'll be safe. Vacuo did not much care for that. <laughs> oh shit, they're kings of Bonus? Veo were to fall, there'd Queen. Be no one left to stop Mistral and Mantle from conquering them next. So they did what they considered to be the logical thing. They drove Mantle and Mistral out of Vacuo and told Veo they had their backs. Mm. <laughs> I love their style. <laughs> so the war raged on. Wow. Grim attacks increased worldwide. And the battlefield sense. dismet a temporary ceasefire in order to deal with the hordes of monsters Common enemy. returning to the fight at hand. Those left miserable back at home, however, were often helpless with their best warriors away fighting the right. good fight. A lot of settlements were lost during these years, and most were never reclaimed. Rations on food and dust were put into effect. Development of technology accelerated. Humans and faunas who fought alongside one another became closer. And every day, mankind grew more and more efficient at destroying itself. Yeah, wow, that's a great line. But it all ended in the vacuo campaign. Mistral and Mantle knew that if they could take the dust mines of Vacuo, they would effectively cut off the supply of dust to their enemy. Okay. It was to be a final devastating blow to Vale and Vacuo. Mm. They were only half right. The King of Vale personally led his army into battle alongside the soldiers of Vacuo and decimated the enemy forces. Crown atop his head and armed only with a sword and his scepter, he laid waste to countless men. As the sand was soaked red with blood, the Grim came in droves. It was the single deadliest battle of the war, Damn. and legends of the greatness and terror of the warrior king were born that day. Historians will tell you most of these stories are nothing but grandiose hyperbole. Unusually violent weather conditions, combined with Mantle's unfamiliarity with the desert combat, are likely what led to such a high king death King of count. Vale and Queen of Vacuo. Whatever the reasoning, everyone bowed to the King of Vale by the time it was Oh, over. wow. The Great War had ended. Interesting. The world was ready to live under the rule of Vale, but the King refused. The leaders of the four kingdoms met on the island of Vital. Right. And it was there that they worked together to form a treaty and establish the future of Remnant. Territories were redistributed, slavery was abolished, wow. governments restructured, and the warrior king, the last king Vale would ever have, founded the Huntsman Academies and placed his most trusted followers in command of each okay. king's school. He would teach the world to fight so long as we promised to fight for ourselves and never against ourselves. Okay. Wow. Seems like we haven't kept our end of the bargain. True. Wow. Okay, that was good. I loved how like just like minor things, you know, like in Mistral, like, like initially all the kingdoms had their own sort of territory. They were just left alone to deal with as they, you know, as they pleased. However, with Mistral's, I guess Mistral was the one that started the Great War, right? They invaded Vale and Vale retaliated against, you know, them having their territory subjugated by, you know, an invading kingdom. And that's what ultimately started the Great War. Even Crow was mentioning that no, to this day, we don't know who shot first, but that's like, that's usually the opening line of the start of any war, you know what I'm saying? So it's just, it mimics, you know, our history it's so well. And of course, that's where they drew the inspiration from. I loved how in the art art style of this specific world of remnant how you know when they were depicting the various kingdoms i love how all the other kingdoms had like you know um ancient weapons like swords or spears or bows whereas uh what you call atlas had like the muskets you know the, like the old old school uh rifles you know what i'm saying so that was pretty cool showing how the atlas has advanced in technology far more advanced than the other kingdoms and of course they were the ones who shared that 
advancement with Mistral, with Mistral sharing their, you know, uh, natural resources, their abundant natural resources with them. And that's what ultimately uh, nurtured their alliance to begin with. And Vecchio sort of just came in at the last moment and be like, oh shit, we, uh, the world's doing some shit. Yeah, we, 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 we better do it too. You know what I'm saying? In congruence with our own history, like Mistral, I guess, had like slavery because they were, the Crow mentioned that they were jerks, you know, and I'm guessing Atlas also had slavery. Not sure, not so certain about Vale though. Uh, maybe Vacuo as well, I'm not sure. But Vacuo's had, a Vacuo's queen was a faunus, like a, you know, a horned faunus. So Vacuo definitely, I don't think had slavery because if, uh, if their queen is a faunus, then I would assume that they have much more, they're much more tolerant of other uh, races and religions and ideologies. So Crow mentioned this awesome line that humanity's gotten very good at destroying itself. You know, this perpetual cycle of destruction, you know, perpetual cycle of destruction. And it goes on uh, to reinforce that concept of, you know, humanity is both creation and destruction the way that they were first created by the two brothers. That's crazy. And I feel like this Great War sort of uh, emphasized that a little bit more. Because of the Great War, all the soldiers were self sent to the battlefront, which made um, the rest of the kingdoms being unprotected that much more susceptible to grim attack. And so that's, that's it. There was an incredible amount of innocent life lost not just from the war itself but from the grim attack alone so that's crazy man and of course it all ended at the hands of the king of Vale. which now that I know that Ospin sort of you know I'm guessing if I had to guess I would probably guess that that king of Vale might have been Ospin simply because if this guy has been like body hopping or body swapping if that is his semblance you know as i sort of assume if he has the ability to swap bodies and live multiple lifetimes then bruh that could potentially be the king of veil and the other thing is that he was green you know the king of veil was drawn uh very deliberately i feel in complete green attire and we know green is ospin's color and now it will eventually be oscar's color as well so that makes me think that maybe he was the original uh, uh, ender of the Great War, why he knows so much about the Great War and why uh, all the different kingdoms uh, pay him so much respect at the moment. I'm not sure how many people know about his uh, reincarnated spirit powers or whatnot. Or I'm guessing the people closest to him probably do. A crow, Glenda, perhaps Ironwood as well, but I'm not 100% certain. I guess, I guess Salem doesn't know, right? Anyways, that's, uh, those are ideas for my discussion video, but, um, let's see what the Shani Dust Company is all about, you know? World of Remnant Shani Dust Company, bro. Shneeda's company. Oh. All right, all right. What was I supposed to talk about next? <laughs> oh. oh. Oh boy. Yeah. Okay. I've got a few words to say about this one. Mm. The Schnee Dust Company. Bunch of self-entitled, monopolizing SNOBs <laughs> who only care about making a profit, no matter how many little people they got to step on to make it happen. <clears throat> but uh, that's just my opinion. As you all know, our survival in the world of Remnant depends almost entirely on a crystallized substance known as dust. Right. It powers our cities, fuels our machines, and gives us a fighting chance against the creatures of Grim. Which means it's extremely valuable. Nowadays, it's almost impossible to buy dust products without the Schnee Company snowflake stamped on the box. But it didn't always used to be that way. Nicholas Schnee was the son of a dust miner turned soldier. Born just after the Great War, he found himself at the perfect point in history to take full advantage of the world's next industrial revolution. Interesting. The Kingdom of Mantle, soon to be Atlas, was in a transformative period. They'd found themselves on the forefront of technology, but realized they depleted nearly all of their natural resources to do so. Hmm. That's where old Nick came in. Rather than watch his kingdom become the I get it. The aid of others, I get it. In case you're wondering, I get it. Nick decided to spend his days at combat school, his nights working alongside his father in the dwindling mantle mines, and any time in between learning everything he could about anything he didn't know. That kid had a fire in his belly. When his 
father died, he left his son everything he had. It wasn't much, but it was enough for Nick to set his plan into action. He left school, rallied all the men he could afford, and set out on an expedition to find a dust deposit that could revitalize his kingdom. Mm. And wouldn't you know, he actually pulled it off. Fast forward just a few years, and the name Schnee suddenly meant something. Quality, affordability, mm. trust. See, all those years spent in combat school were so that Nick could personally oversee every new expedition. People appreciate a man who's willing to stick his neck out for them. Mm. And it's how the Schnee Dust Company earned the business of every kingdom and remnant. Unfortunately, it's also what led to an early retirement. Nick had started a family that missed him, and his body was tired. Years of working in dust mines can have some nasty side effects on your health. Right. And so enters Jacques Jullet. Having married into the family, Jacques decided to take the Schnee name over his own. He was... Uh, a lot of words I shouldn't repeat. But most importantly, he was a cunning businessman. Jacques managed to convince Nicholas that he was the perfect man to run the SDC in his place. And from a certain point of view, he was right. Under Jacques' leadership, the Schneed Dust Company has become more profitable than ever, completely dominating the industry. Wow. But at the cost of the company's soul. Cheap labor, dangerous working conditions, doing whatever it takes to destroy the competition. Jacques Schnee doesn't care about people. He cares about winning. Mm. That, and making sure he's got the best damn PR team in the world. <laughs> the Schnee name still means something today. But as for what it'll mean tomorrow, well, your guess is as good as Ah, oh, yeah. She's gonna make uh, Grandpa Nicholas proud, you know? interesting so snow white's gra snow white's grandpa is literally santa claus pretty cool if i do say so myself that's crazy so his name was jock judo initially and then he married into the schnee family and you get to see like the silhouette of um uh mama pep schnee over there just for a second i guess you know she he came in and he came in for power and sort of wooed mama pep schnee and then uh once he acquired his power, she ultimately found, figured out the truth about him and uh, resulted in alcoholism instead. It's like, damn, I can't deal with this shit anymore. It, it's all up to Winter and um, Weiss to live up to their family name. You know what I'm saying? Nicholas Schnee, huh? Started the whole thing. That's cool. That's a, that's a dope. That's a pretty interesting. Because uh, I guess it, it goes to show that even um, the rulers of atlas had humble beginnings even though their history uh, sort of the, the history of the world of remnant depicts them as sort of the villains for you know the war itself of course history is written by the victors of anything so of course they're going to be seen as the negative of course if they wrote the history we would have uh, had an entirely different uh, perspective on the um Schnee dust company altogether. The King of Vale saw to that, didn't he? You know, which I think might still be Ospin, but of course I'm not certain. Maybe some sort of progenitor version of him. I don't know. It's hard to say. We don't have enough information yet to actually know how long Ospin has existed. Because, I mean, if he's been jumping bodies left and right, if that's truly his semblance, then he could have he could be as old as time itself you know what i'm saying so i don't know what do you guys think leave your comments down below thank you guys for joining me today to check out these world of remnant videos i'll see you guys later in the next uh video i might do in my next video will probably be a ruby memes reaction and then i'm gonna jump into ruby volume 4 chapter 9 or my or chapter 9 before the meme reaction i don't know however i feel i'll see you guys later in the next video until then have a wonderful day or a wonderful night wherever you guys are bye thank you guys so much for watching and if you enjoyed this video and would like to see more like it please subscribe hit that like button and feel free to share the video and i'll see you guys next time